Hello world. My name is Stephen Sarma Weyerman. I teach computer science at the University of Pittsburgh in Johnstown, and I've been an avid Linux user for 20 years now. I want to talk a bit today about why I support free and open source software, and also some problems I've seen in the community. So I got into this in 1995 when I came across uh, Stephen Levy's book, Hackers, Heroes of the Computer Revolution. Uh, I was 15 years old and I devoured that book in a week. Uh, I was enthralled by it. Uh, being the socially awkward computer nerd who loved uh, computers, uh, reading about the pioneers of computing and artificial intelligence captured my imagination. Uh, the anti-authoritarian hacker ethic that Levy outlined resonated with me as the way things should be. And then Levy summarizes this hacker ethic uh, in chapter two uh, on six points. First, access to computers and anything that might teach you something about the way the world works should be unlimited and total. Always yield to the hands-on imperative. Two. All information should be free. Three, mistrust authority, promote decentralization. Four, hackers should be judged by their hacking, not bogus criteria such as degrees, age, race, or position. Five, you can create art and beauty on a computer. Six, computers can change your life for the better. Now, Hackers was first published in 1984 at the height of the personal computing revolution and long before Linus Torvalds even conceived of creating his own operating system. Reading it was my first exposure to the radical ideals of one Richard M. Stallman, the last of the hackers, as Levy calls him. I admired Stallman's project, which seemed firmly rooted in the hacker ethic, that all information should be free, that people should always help others by striving to make sure that access to information, software, and source, open source software, should remain free, always. It was only later in life that I began to reflect more critically on this utopian vision and how it manifested in the various communities that Levy describes. While there are some notable women mentioned in the text, such as Roberta Williams, the vast majority of actors in the revolution are men. The fact that gender identity is missing from Levy's list of bogus criteria speaks volumes to the sort of environment that has characterized the computing revolution. Levy writes about the young hackers uh, that it was the predictability and controllability of a computer system, as opposed to the hopelessly random problems of human relationship, which made hacking particularly attractive. And quoting one hacker uh, who said, women even today are considered grossly unpredictable. How can a hacker tolerate such an imperfect being? So many hackers, simply do not understand how to properly interact with other human beings, regardless of gender. This does not excuse the bad behavior or hostile environments created by these men, especially when they have call, been called out on it time and time again. Linus Torvalds, for example, has an ongoing history of verbally abusing others in the Linux kernel community. For the longest time, he defended his behavior because he doesn't believe in being professional or polite or politically correct. Many in the community confronted Torvalds about his behavior, and in 2018, he took a step away from the community to get some assistance on how to understand people's emotions and respond appropriately. Now, there's no denying that when it comes to hacking, Torvalds is brilliant. Given the success of the Linux kernel and its critical importance in many aspects of computing today, it should come as no surprise that a personality cult has formed around him. There are those who believe Torvalds can do no wrong. 
Some may even believe that his brilliance meant that his behavior should be emulated, an attitude which can be found, for example, in the and base of Rick and Morty. Now, Torvald's past behavior is reflective of a much larger problem in the community, of which he was just one high-profile example. Being as high-profile as he is, his apology and attempt at self-improvement is also a very important one. It took considerably longer than it should have, but he ultimately did it right, I think. Now, the scandal surrounding Richard Stallman last year is yet another high-profile example of toxicity found in this community. His defense of Marvin Minsky's association with Jeffrey Epstein and Minsky's alleged sexual assault of an underage girl is inexcusable. In the face of criticisms, Stallman doubled down on his position and blamed the whole ordeal on, quote, a series of misunderstandings and mischaracterizations. He ultimately had to resign his position with both MIT and the Free Software Foundation. His remarks defending Minsky can be easily found online and in full, along with a long list of very troubling encounters a number of women at MIT have had with Stallman over the decades. And I am not going to go into that here. I will link to articles in the video description below. But it is not a mischaracterization to decry Stallman's behavior as sexist. Now, Richard Stallman is the founder of the GNU Project and the Free Software Foundation. He is responsible for many of the tools that made the development of Linux a possibility, as well as the philosophy that underlies the open source and free software movements. Like Torvalds, there is no denying his brilliance when it comes to hacking. And like Torvalds, there are many who believe that he can do no wrong and excuse his behavior around women as something that shouldn't be taken too seriously. Stallman, however, has shown no signs of critical self-reflection or remorse for his behavior. In this regard, his behavior has done more harm than good for the advancement of his ideals. It's as though one could hear the echoes of that anonymous hacker Levy quoted. And I'm sure there are many a tech bro who will blame Stallman's plight on the quote, gross unpredictability of women or oversensitivity or political correctness crusade by some social justice warriors or men hating feminists. For example, bringing me to the uh, video that uh, prompted this uh, rant, uh, Brian Lunduk uh, recently in his Linux Sucks 2020 uh, speech, YouTube video, uh, he characterized what happened to Stallman as the mob came after him. And he describes what happened to Torvalds as the mob tried to come after him. And I'll link to the relevant part of uh, um, Lunduk's video uh, in the description below. Now, Lunduk's assessment has a striking parallel to Stallman's self-assessment. There is this role reversal of victim and perpetrator. Stallman becomes a victim of the mob. And those victimized by Stallman's behavior become the mob. <clears throat> In discussing the problems of the community, Lunduk blames the mob for making people feel unsafe and not want to be a part of the Linux community. Now, it seems to me much more likely that people don't want to be a part of the Linux community because they don't want to be a part of a toxic community. The community that was made toxic by the past behaviors of Torvalds and Stallman and their sycophants and apologists who have either uncritically defended them or given them countless passes because of their brilliant technical contributions. The problem of this community is not the mob is the failure of 
toxic masculine tech bros to debug their own social programming. It is a problem we encounter again and again in every subsection of this community. Academia, corporate, developers, hobbyists, gamers, and digital content creators. Every single one of those sub-communities has this problem. And this will continue to be a problem as long as toxic behavior and abuse continues to go unchecked in our communities. As a community, we need to revisit the hacker ethic and rescue its egalitarian commitment to the freedom of information for all people, regardless of degrees, age, race, ethnicity, gender identity, or position. We need to remember that computer science is not an end in itself. It is for the benefit of humanity as a whole. And our communities should reflect those ideals both internally and in the technology they produce. Computers can change your life for the better. Let's work to make sure that remains true for everyone. Thank you.